Okay, so today uh, we're kind of continuing like the math theme, except it's not really math this time. It's Morse code, which uh, it's like an alphabet, right? It's kind of like reading Braille, but you like you're not touching things. So it's like made up of different shapes. And it's actually kind of easy to learn because there's only like dots, dashes, and Xs. And you've probably seen it in like movies or maybe if you, you've like tried to learn it before where like people do like flashlight stuff. And if you like keep the light on for a long time, that's a dash. If you flash it for a really short time, that's a dot. Uh, or you might see it like, I guess not see it, but you might hear it like uh, small short sounds versus long sounds and you'd want to send a message that way. Uh, it's really supposed to be an auditory language, I think. Like, so it's not supposed to be done with flashlights because it's hard to see where the divides between the words are, but we'll get into that later. Uh, but anyways, this week, Pollux and Morbit, they're very similar. There's only slight differences between them, and they're both based on Morse code. Uh, before we get into this, next week is going to be Rail Fence Cipher. It's another, it's another one of those ones where it's like not really math. Like you won't do any math at all while actually solving it, but it's like based in math a little bit. But I think rail fence is like one of the most puzzly ciphers, if that makes sense. Like it's not very bashy, if you know what that means. Like it, it's not like trial and error or everything like that. You just kind of have to like look at the thing and try and like rearrange it. It's almost like an anagram. All right, but right now, Pox and Morbit. So you don't have to encrypt for these, which is always good because it's hard to check your work if you're encrypting. Uh, and there's only decryption. So you won't have to actually know how to like go from an actual message that you want to say to Morse code. Uh, that would be much harder. Uh, so what the bottom bullet point is saying is basically you'll be given a Morse code message uh, but you have to be given a hint, right? So it says given six of those digits mappings. Uh, that's for Pollux. Uh, what that means, I'll actually cover later because it's a little hard to understand right now. But anyways, this is what Morse code looks like. Uh, this table is actually given to you in the beginning page of any test you take. Uh, since we're online this year, uh, like there's no test packet or anything, but an event supervisor will uh, always like share a PDF with you for you to print out like beforehand and have this uh, to use on the test. So you can see like it's somewhat in order of letter frequencies, which is nice because so uh, up here, they just ordered it alphabetically for you to look at. So like A, B, C, D, E, and then like there doesn't seem to be a pattern that way, right? Cause like A looks nothing like B looks nothing like C and so on. But if you come down here, this is sorted by pattern and it looks somewhat like letter frequencies because E we know is the most common and it's one of the most simple uh, things to write in Morse code. It's literally just a dot. T is the second most common. It's literally just a dash. And that theme kind of continues because A is just dot dash, another pretty simple thing. I is dot dot and then you just con continue going down and you can see like these are all pretty common letters but then we hit like a V and B and the theme kind of ends but in the beginning the very simple letters to write are almost always the very common ones in English all right and yeah like I was saying you never have to mem memorize Morse code it definitely helps but it's just kind of hard to memorize because there is no pattern uh, you can do some visual things like if you look at r it's two dots surrounding a dash so if you look for the symmetry maybe you can like memorize what r looks like but it's hard to do that for all 26 letters and maybe even some numbers even though numbers don't really pop up that much all right and when we do practice problems later uh like in 30 minutes or something uh we're going to have the opportunity to like have this at our side and uh reference it Okay, so this is more just about Morse code. So we're not getting into specifically Pollux or Morbit yet. So letters are separated by the X symbol. This, you, you wouldn't consider this a letter. Like it's not the letter X, it's just a divider. 
so okay so if i was going to say what should i say if i was going to say pan that's the p there's an x because we have to separate the letters that's the a separate the letters again and then that's the n and you don't put an x or a double x at the end you just leave it you might also see it written as this with a slash instead of the x uh but they mean the same thing uh in sayoli context though you want to be using x's because that's kind of like the standardized way to do it uh yeah so when i was saying we'd have a table available for use later this is what i'm talking about can't fit the other one because that's huge but this one's still pretty readable all right, and I'll give another example about when to use XX. Uh, so if I want to say my pen, for example, so M is dash dash, you have to put an X in between letters of the same word. Y is dash dot dash dash. And then here, the word my has ended. The pan is a new word, so I have to put an XX here. And then I would just spell out pan like I did last time. All right. Okay, so we're doing Pollux first because uh, I don't want to say it's simpler, but it has less stuff to understand. Let's say that. So basically, you're going to be given some series of numbers in Pollux. Like uh, if I skip ahead a little bit, this is what a question looks like. You have just a bunch of numbers and it looks really random. But what you'll notice is that, well, I, actually what I'm telling you is that none of these are like two digit, two digit numbers. Like this is not 12, this is not 59. They are all one digit numbers just stacked right up on top of each other. So it's one, two, zero, five, nine, eight, and so on. Uh, so if we go back, you only have 10 one digit numbers to choose from, right? Because zero through nine. And you only have three symbols to form letters and words and the spaces in between them. So you can use X, you can use dot, and you can use dash. Those are the three distinct symbols you use in Morse code to spell stuff. And you have zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine. That's how many one digit numbers you have to basically interchange with the X, the dot, or the dash. So if you think of it as, as an aristocrat, just like I might say like A, or like say I'm saying hi, and the ciphertext is B, Y. Just like I might say that B maps to H, so ciphertext math maps to plain text, I might say that zero maps to a dot. When I say maps to, it means it's like interchangeable with, like you would decode it to a dot. So that's kind of the idea behind Pollux. You have this series of numbers, you're given hints so if i say for example if i go back to that thing again here you're given hints right two and three are dots five and six are dashes eight and nine are spaces so according to regional and invitational rules you have to be given six hints so that's six hints right there uh and like we were saying we know six out of the ten mappings already because we said there is zero through nine and that's ten distinct numbers Okay, this isn't a minus, this is a through. Uh, so there's 10 distinct one digit, one digit numbers that we can map to a dot, a, a dot, a dash, or an X. But we're already given six of them. So once we like fill in six of them, so like an aristocrat, you would probably like write underneath. Because like it told us that two is a dot, for example. So you just substitute all the twos with dots like this. And using the clues that you get, you can figure out actually like really easily what the remaining four are because the hints are actually like so revealing. So Pollux is actually 
very easy once you learn it. It's just like kind of a learning curve because you probably haven't done uh, Morse code before. What is happening? Okay. All right. Keep them in groups of five really does not matter. Uh, some people do it, some people don't. All right, so I think we've pretty much like learned the structure of it. And this slide is more about tips. There must be at least one X every five characters. Because if we go back to look at the alphabet, the longest thing you can see here, that's a letter. Ignore the numbers. Numbers like really don't pop up. Neither do punctuation. The longest letter you can see is a four character letter. So like B is dash dot dot dot. J is dot dash dash dash. And there's a couple more four character letters, but that's the longest one letter can be. And if you know that an X has to separate two different letters, or maybe an XX separates uh, two different words, every five letters, you need to have at least one X because you can't have some kind of letter that is longer than four characters. All right, hopefully that made some sense. Whoops. All right, yeah, so you want to start with this. After, well, you're not starting with this. Technically, you start with the hints that you're given. But after you fill in all of the hints, you need to see where do I need an X? Where can I not possibly input anything else? Uh, because like, say I filled in all of my hints and then I have this, uh, did not mean to put a text box. Okay, say I have this dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, dash thing. And then I don't know what goes here. I, I don't know what surrounds it basically. But what I have in my mind is that Morse code, the longest letter possible can only be four characters long. So we already have four because dot, dot, dash, dash is four. So on both sides, there has to be an X surrounding it. So that's just an example of how you would like to deduce which ones the X's are. Uh, okay. Remember most times, okay, this one's like not very true. They will, like test writers will try to do a four, three, three division, but it doesn't necessarily have to be four dots. All right, so let's try this one. Um, so basically, first thing you do, you look at the hints, and then you fill in. So two and three are dots. So I'll fill that in first. OK, I I'm just going to cover what's happening here. I know that four or seven has to be an x. Because if seven's not an X, then we have some kind of four character long word, or not word, four character long letter, and then four would have to be. But if seven is an X, then we don't break that rule. Okay, same thing here. Eight or zero has to be an X, and we already know that eight is an X, so zero doesn't necessarily have to be one. I'll just put it since we already talked about it. Okay, so eight and nine are X's. And uh, this is another one of those ciphers where you want to be really careful that you're writing like exactly below or exactly above just so you don't mess yourself up. Okay, so I know here that this is the beginning of a new word because there's a double X. Okay, yeah, like that three is slightly misplaced so it looks weird. There's another beginning of a new word. And five and six are dashes. Okay, so right now I know that zero has to be an X, 
because if it was anything else, we'd have a five, char five character letter. So zero has to be an X to make sure that we don't violate the four character maximum. So five and six are dashes and then zero is an X. All right, so we've done everything we possibly could with our hints uh, and the fact that we could deduce that zero is an X. So now we need to start actually converting back to the alphabet we can understand, right? So we need to start using this table for the letters that we can. So for instance, here we can convert this to a letter because we have X's on either side of it. So we know that we finished writing the letter in Morse code. So we know that it's just a dash. So I'm pretty sure that's like T or something. Where'd it go? Yeah, T. So if T is the second letter of a word and it's a, it's a two letter word because we have this X thing here, what is the first letter probably? Can anybody just uh, say it in chat? Also keep in mind that this is a two character letter and it already ends in a dot. Yeah, it's probably I, right? Uh, so if we cross-reference that, yeah, it says I is dot dot, and that's possible because uh, we already know that the second letter is a dot. So that's how you would go about like trying to not really guess, but deduce. Uh, what the remaining mappings are. So if we say one is a dot, then we get a lot more information about the rest of the thing. Okay, and here we know seven is an X because otherwise this would be like a monstrously long letter. So seven has to be X. Okay, so that probably leaves that four as a dash just to make it four, three, three, instead of having something weird like five, three, two. But we can just leave it for now because you know we don't want to make any hasty decisions and accidentally make a mistake. Okay, so this letter and this letter are completely finished filling in. So we can just look to our table to find out what it is. Yeah, you're right, Julie, it's, it is. Uh, Four does not have anything in there, but we can actually take a guess. Remember how I said it's probably dash? You know that this one letter, uh, one character letter has to be A or I, right? Because it's just a one letter word in English. Or wait, no, no, okay, never mind. Ignore me. I thought there was a double X after it. But, anyways, you know that it has to be a dash or a dot because it can't be an X, because then you would have four X's in a row and that's just weird. But if you go here, a dot by itself is E and a dash by itself is T. And if you look at the letter that comes after it, it's dot, 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 where can I find it? It's I. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't know many words that start with EI versus TI, right? So I, I would go with this. Yeah, either, I guess. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's not make that guess yet, because I don't want to, yeah. I, I don't want to accidentally lead us down the wrong path. So let's fill in all the letters we can first. That's usually the best strategy. And then 
we can start making guesses. Uh, so I just fill in E because this letter is just a dot and that's E. Uh, here, maybe we can take a look at the 4-4 four, four thing because this either has to be dash dash or dot dot. So we can see what those letters might be. Dot dot is I, we already covered that. Dash dash, is that a thing? Oh, it's M. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty sure it's dash dash, yeah, time. Because you wouldn't have I and then I and then an E in a word, right? Like it just doesn't make sense. So it would have to be dash dash and then that would make this just a dash. So it's it is time. Okay, so I'll fill in all the other fours as dashes. And I'm pretty sure we filled in all the numbers. So now it's just a matter of using the table quickly to convert from Morse code to English. Okay, just dash is T. So it's probably saying it is time to, yeah. Dot, dash, dot, dot. L, yeah, I'm really slow at finding these. Dot, I think is E, yeah. That should be A, yeah. Yeah, like you kind of want to have E, A, and T memorized, but past that, it's kind of hard <laughs> just like to memorize everything. I know O is dash, 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 because that's just all dashes, but okay. So it's probably saying it's time to learn. Uh, yeah, just double checking that is what it says. Dot, 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 what is that? S. Dash, dash, dash is O. Dash, dash is M. Sum. Morse code. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I didn't make up. Yeah, I didn't make up this uh, quote. I took this from a friend, so I didn't actually know what that was going to do. But it says it is time to learn some Morse code. All right, but you can see that Pollux is actually pretty simple. There's, I said there was a learning curve earlier, but there's really not. It's really self-explanatory because you get the table, right? And there's not much learning to do. It's really just practice. Like you just have to do some problems where you're given hints and you need to know how to use those hints best. Uh, when I'm saying use those hints best, the strategies that we tried were finding out where the X's had to be. That's the most helpful. And then also uh, we tried plugging in potential matches, right? Like when we had this four, four thing, we decided that four had to go to dash because otherwise dot dot made no sense because there was an I and then there was an E and then dot dot's an I and I don't think there's a English word that contains this but there is an English word that contains this. So that would happen if it was dash dash, which was time, tie is not a thing. So that's how you do it. You find the X's and then you see if it makes sense in English or not. And if it doesn't, then you kind of have to like go back. Uh, yeah, this kind of just covers it. You can't have three X's in a row because two X's separate words. One X separates letters. I mean, maybe three X's separates like paragraphs and actual writing or something, but we're not doing actual writing. All right, yeah, so this was the solution. This is how you would see it written on like an answer key or something. And now we're getting into Morbit. Okay, I thought this actually might take longer, but we're going pretty fast and doing pretty well. So we might have some time for some other stuff at the end. But basically, it's very similar, except instead of like zero mapping to an X this time, it, it, it's kind of weird to wrap your head around. You have X, dots, and dash as your three different symbols. Morbit uses pairings. so zero might go to x dot one might go to xx and if you look at it all the potential pairings oops 
it's this, right? There are nine potential things. Oh, actually, you wouldn't use zero in Morbit because uh, there's only nine potential pairings you can have. Pairings as in a series of two symbols that you would use in Morse code. So instead of going from uh, zero to nine, like we did in Pollux, we're only going from one to nine because we don't have 10 things possible. So here you might have, uh, I'm just gonna erase this part since I already wrote all the pairings up there. Like four might go to this, six might go to this, one might go to this, two might go to this and so on. So instead of Pollux where we wrote one thing below a number, like what one character that mapped, we have two characters. So it's just like a slightly condensed uh, Pollux. All right, so here you can see again that we have our six hints. Uh, basically like you just wanna write a lot tighter because you have some more stuff to fit in. I'm gonna fill in all the fives first because that's just what I saw. All right, this one, it's very, very similar <laughs> to uh, Pollux. It's like the exact same solve pattern. You would do the exact same strategies and stuff like that. So this one, I want you guys to try to lead. Remember that every number has to map to a series of two characters. Okay, so this is I. Oh, did I not bring the table here? All right, one second. I'll, uh, I'll copy paste the table onto here so we can use that. Okay, that's slightly annoying because I can't see it because of Zoom, so I'll move it over. All right. So eight is XX. And you can see like with Morbit, I honestly think it's easier because you're given two different like characters at once. So like I already have the beginning of the quote already because all of them were already given to me in the hint. So I like literally have the first two words. So from those, I can actually like kind of deduce what the rest of the quote might say. Okay, this is weird because you're not supposed to end with an X. Uh, just keep that in mind. This one is just a little weird. There should not be an X at the end of the quote. Because if you think about it, you're not separating anything. There's just the last letter and then there's empty space. So you don't need to separate it from anything. Okay, so like you can see, we have so much filled in already. Uh, I think that's all our hints. I might, yeah, I missed this too. I might have missed something else, but I think that's everything. So uh, let's try and go ahead. Okay, so yeah, so I'm going to try and do as little as possible here. So uh, whatever you want to do to solve this, I have, yeah. I, I was going to suggest like you can start by filling in the beginning. Yeah. You can write if you want to. I actually didn't know that that was possible. I thought I didn't set it up for that. But yeah, you can go ahead and write. Everybody can if uh, it's allowed on your computer.
But the beginning is I have, yeah. All right, what do we know uh, while somebody keeps filling in the letters that we already have? What do we know about this section? What do we know that three has to start with? Because we have a four character thing here already, right? So. What is the next character that has to appear after that? Yeah, an X. So uh, we know that there's three different X pairs that we can have, but we already used XX and we already used X dot. So we're only left with X dash. So that means three has to be X dash. Yeah, so I, I can fill those in for you guys if you want to keep doing the actual solving. Okay, I'll get rid of that arrow because it looks slightly weird. Okay, so now we can run through our entire list. Uh, we already did, so if, if I just do this again. Oops. We've already done dash x. I, I'm gonna do this since an x is a little confusing. Oh, we've already took, taken care of everything that starts with an X. We've done dot dot. We've done dot dash. We've done dot X. We've done, have we done anything else? So we're left with dash dot and dash dash, right? And we have, hold on. Yeah, I didn't fill in this four, that's my bad. And this five. So we have one and seven left, one and seven. And one has to be either dash dash or dash dot. And seven has to be the other one. Oh, okay. So from this word, it kind of looks like everything. So if you notice a word pattern, you can kind of apply it, right? And this dot kind of does make it everything. So in order for this letter to be like Y, for example, what is Y? It's dash dot dash dash. So it's dash dot dash dash. So that means that one is dash dot and seven is dash dash. Okay, uh, yeah, you guys can fill in the rest. Yeah, this is gonna end up looking kind of interesting with all the colors in the handwriting and the typing. <laughs> Oh yeah, if you're gonna fill stuff in, in the middle row, I suggest like either writing really small like this. I'm actually gonna choose a different color so it doesn't confuse us. But like, yeah, either write really small or type like that, just so you don't like take up too much space or cover anything. Wait, actually, yeah, I'm not going to fill anything in, just so you guys can have a little bit of practice with Morse code.
All right, but as you can see, this week was pretty straightforward. These ciphers, Pollux and Morbit, uh, yeah, they're time consuming because like we probably don't have Morse code memorized, but they're pretty easy to just reason out. And once you have everything filled in, it's literally just a matter of looking at the table and then converting to English. Yeah, so I think we can spend the last section of the class just doing some aristocrats since that's probably the most fun. So I have a shocking something, and then it says, I remember everything. So what do you think? There's no double X's within that. Yeah, memory, exactly. That's one thing you might want to do to just save some time, read the quote overall, and then not necessarily make a guess, but fill in what you like know is right. So it's, I have a shocking memory. I remember everything. Nice job. All right. So. If you look here, uh, we'll know that we were right. Uh, you might want to clear. Yeah, I will. Don't worry. All right, yeah. So this is the last slide, I'm pretty sure. So we're not done with class yet, obviously, but it did go a lot faster than I expected. So nice job for like getting it really quickly. Uh, but we will do some cryptograms to finish out class. Uh, as for homework, it's just going to be the same. You guys know uh, what to do. All right, so if you haven't been here for a class where we did this, you just like suggest me to fill in something in chat. All right, here, if it were me, I would start with the most common letter. Yeah, which one, though? W which one, Ethan? <laughs> It's not a trick question, by the way. There's one letter that's like clearly more common than everything else, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Aryan. It does look like it's the. What could this word be? Yeah, but keep in mind that we did use T already, right? So what other letter? Yeah. So if you have something and an H and an E and you already use T, the W has to come before the H. What, what could this word be? Who, but we did already use the H, yeah. Yeah, was. So here, it's kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain it. You could go off of verb tenses to solve it. Uh, oh, are you saying the, the bat was? <laughs> I, I actually don't think it's bat because if I fill in B, this word looks like not right, right? So it's actually something that sounds like bat, but it's not bat. Yeah, I think it's cat. Because uh, if you have C here, this word becomes kind of, well, I wouldn't say clear. It's probably hard to see, but it, it becomes 
a possible word. Yeah, that, that is an R, it's created. All right, so now we're in a tough situation because all of these letters only happen at once, so it doesn't fill in anything extra for us. So this is where we need to read the quote to ourselves and think what is related. Yeah, sneezed is right. I don't think there's actually another word except like sneered, but we already used R. Okay, this one might be tough, but the cat was created when the something sneezed. It's probably an animal. It's probably related to a cat. What are we thinking? Yeah, lion. That, that was actually like kind of hard. It, it's not a word you would see often. All right, so if I were you, I'd probably just recommend you to start with one letter words. The beginning is actually like kind of a common word pattern though. But we can just stick to the basics. What, what is that one probably? Yeah, A. And the reason I'm gonna say that it's A and not I is KS. Uh, yeah, it is. I, I don't know how you got that, but, oh, wait, did you get it? Because it ends like this, this word. Okay, yeah, that, that's pretty good. I wasn't looking at that. Okay, so, yeah, if this ends in something SS, what, what is this something that I highlighted here? It's got to be a vowel, right? So choose an appropriate vowel. Yeah, ESS, because... If we think about it, it's probably ness or less, right? That that's the only way ESS words can really end. Yeah, that is is nice. So it's something e ness or something e less, but I begins this two letter word. So does it have to be n or l? Yeah. Exactly. And then what two letter word begins with N? There's really only one. No man. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. When you have a two letter word and then a three letter word, and then the like first and last letters match up like this, it's probably no man. Uh, that, that's kind of deep though. So you, you don't have to know that. Do we recognize this word? Necessary, yeah. Two R, yeah. Realities. Delusion. This is also like kind of a common word pattern. You can, obviously like we went the N-E-S-S route and that's like very valid, but there's also one way you could just like get the entire word by looking at the overall word pattern. Yeah, happiness. It's one of those N-E-S-S words that has a distinct word pattern. Okay, so once again, we're left with some one letter, how do I say that? Letters that appear only once in the entire quote. So it's gonna take some guessing or maybe rereading the quote. Yeah, of some kind. All right, here I would start with the contraction. Yeah, it has to be Yule. Oh, well, I guess it doesn't have to be, but like 99% of the time it has to be. Okay, R is very common. What does that look like? Yeah, you'll feel... Oh, okay, I've seen this quote before. Yeah, believe. What do you, what do you feel? You feel something.
Yeah, you feel better. Still. Okay, so if we already used S, what does this I something word have to be? In, yeah. Morning, yep. When? Okay, so we've almost got everything. This first word should, I mean, yeah, the rest of this should come to you. Middle age, yeah. So middle age is when you still believe you'll feel better in the morning. Oh boy, this is, it's a common word pattern, but it might not be the word you think. Yeah, it does look like there, right? Because J is also like really common. But if we fill in there, it's there, T-E. But it's a, it's a very common word to there. Or it's a very similar word to there. Yeah, it's where. Uh, it looks weird because W is so common. But sometimes it just happens. Especially in short quotes, uh, letter frequencies are sometimes messed up. What is this word probably? whom that's <laughs> I, i'm just gonna say it. yeah it doesn't happen a lot there's a word that happens a lot uh more often that starts with wh yeah when happens a lot but remember that we already used e also cross-reference it with what this letter has to be yeah it's what Okay, let's try, let's try and do some educated guessing. This is where we something. So this has to be a verb. What's a two letter verb that makes sense with where? It, it's talking about places. It's talking about, I, I don't know how to say it without giving it away. Yeah, it's go, nice. <laughs> where we had, I mean, yeah, that, that works, but generally the quotes are in like f formal English, you know, <laughs> and yeah, and what we do, and then we have this word. Advertises, yeah. Okay, so is this A or I? Yeah, I think it's A too. Main reason being that if you have a if you have it in the middle of a three letter word, it's probably not I. And also because we have this conjunction right here and it's probably not gonna start with I, but if it starts with A, what do you think it is? Yeah, and that's what I think too, nice. A man, yeah. Generally, if the middle letter of the three letter word matches and you have a one letter word before it, it's a man. Very, very rarely it's a cat because for some reason there's kind of a lot of cat quotes on this site. Demands, yeah, nice. Yeah, it is the. Okay, let, let's look at the pattern. So this is some kind of, okay, yeah, snatches is correct. This is some kind of word. This says second, right? I, I feel pretty comfortable that you would get that. This says, what do you think this says? Third, yeah, but if we go back to the beginning, if, if we follow the chain of thinking, what is this? First, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I guess following the chain of thinking again. Fourth, yeah. Yeah, it is pleads. All right, so we got that. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, it was an interesting quote. There are some kind of interesting quotes on this site. You kind of just have to not think about them too hard. I would start with this word. Wait, hold on. It's not the word I think it is. Never mind. Like if you look at the frequencies, it looks like the, but it's not the, because look at me fill this in. This is just wrong. This is kind of tough. Hold on, this is weird. It's GZTH. Mm, I don't think so because H coming before T kind of seems weird, right? In English, unless it's like rights, but doesn't really work. Like the only time H comes before T in English is if you have a word that goes I G H T, like light, night, fight, right? Okay, we, we low key might have to skip this word because it's kind of weird, or skip this quote. It's a, it's a good thought. It's a good thought because the TH frequencies make sense, but you did use H twice, right? You said H was I and H was H, and also H can't be H, right? Yeah, I think we can skip it. It's fine. All right. Slightly common word pattern at the beginning. Actually, kind of very common word pattern, but it's not the most obvious. Oh, this is also something you might want to know. There is some words that are three letters and they have the first one by themselves and then two repeated ones after. Can you think? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be this one. Yeah. Uh, so one of them that's really common is two. I don't think it applies here because how you double check two is that N starts a two letter word, right? But the only two letter word that starts with T has to be O. So if you fill in T O and like this isn't T O O, then you know it can't be two. But uh, keep brainstorming in chat like what kind of words have the same word pattern as two. Yeah, C is another one, but the reason it's not in this case is because uh, the only two letter word that starts with S is so, and it doesn't look like so, right? There's, I think you, you covered two of the top three. Oh yeah, Arjun's right. Sorry, I didn't see that. Yeah, in this case, it's all. But those are the top three. It's two, all, and C. Not necessarily in that order, but like situationally, you can find out which one it is by comparing to the rest of the quote. All right, so if we already used A, what is this? Yeah, exactly. Oh, what is this? This is a more common, yeah, that. Yeah, it is, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going for at the beginning. So one letter and then five letters. And if the middle one matches the first one, the first one is in the one letter word, then it's probably, I think. Okay, what is this? With and the, okay, yeah, you already said that. Uh, this is also another common word pattern. This quote seems like it's full of them. Yeah, the only... That should help clear up this word. People, yep. Oh wow, this is also a common word pattern, this word. Yep.
Yeah, children. Oh, whoops. It's not exactly picture because we don't have enough letters for that, right? But it's a very similar word, figure. Yeah, because you figure something out. Instead of, oh yeah, it's grab. Myself, yeah. So this word was thumb. So I was gonna say, instead of looking at this one, because you never see thumb in a quote. I was going to say, look at the bottom where you can see myself, which is probably a little bit easier. All right, this is a common word pattern that we saw in the last quote. Yeah, it's never. Nice. What, what do we think this word is? Oh yeah, that is returns, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's the, and if we have a word that starts with T-H-E at the end of a sentence, I'm just gonna fill this one in for us. Yeah, oh, okay, well, yeah, Julie got it too. It's probably them. Because if you say like something happened to them or like we gave something to them, whatever the verb is, them is a word, it's an object. It comes at the end of a sentence usually. It's usually not then or they or something like that. Yeah, that's A. So if we already used A, what's this? I, yeah. Uh, these are good guess, but we did already use E, right? Yeah, so I think it is those. Oh, this word pattern is here again. Yeah, which is also kind of common. People, yeah, nice job. Oh, why did that not fill in? Only, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Library, oops. So on the topic of libraries, yeah, it's books. Oh yeah, it's not boots because we already used T. But since we're talking about libraries, it makes sense that we also have books in the same quote. Yeah, so never lend books. Nobody ever returns them. The only books I have in my library are those which people have lent me. Okay, it's kind of a sarcastic quote, I guess. All right. Okay, if you're curious what this is, this is how I like custom generate your homework. But uh, we don't need to look at that. So basically, for next week, we're doing rail fence. There's no like prep required for that, uh, as there usually isn't for this class. Just make sure you practice Pollux and Morbid. Oops. You practice Pollux and Morbit a little bit using the homework that I'll post. And then uh, it's always good to practice aristocrats and number letter conversions, even though we won't be touching number letter conversions for a little bit until we do the whole review of the class on our last week. But until then, yeah, just uh, keep practicing. All right, see you guys.